Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 14. In this tutorial we will learn how to account for notes receivable. We have three learning objectives for this tutorial. First, to review the accounting for short-term interest-bearing notes, basically those that are less than one year. Second, to review accounting for long-term non-interest-bearing notes. So we're looking at notes greater than one year, but this time non-interest bearing as opposed to interest bearing over here. And third, to review accounting for long-term interest bearing notes. So greater than one year and bearing interest. This tutorial is based on the Luther Investments Corp example. So please make sure you download the accompanying file and review the data as necessary. We will begin with the first requirement, which is to assume that the note was for 120 days, so less than one year, so short term, bearing interest at 5%. And so the requirement is to prepare the journal entries to record the sale, the interest payments, and the final settlement of the note under the assumption that interest is paid monthly and that interest is paid upon settlement of the note and that Luther's year end is August 31st. So our first journal entry is dated June 1st and there's a cash down payment of $1,000, a note receivable. And so the land sales is simply the sum of the cash down payment and the note receivable. Accompanying most sales entries, there should be an entry for cost of goods and lot inventory. Of course, this presumes that the company purchased the lots, recorded them as inventory, and now is recording them as a cost of good. Then on June 30th, we record our first interest payment. Remember this is an interest bearing note. And so the calculation for the interest is the principal on the note time 5% divided by 12 months. That's $125 per month. And the total interest that would be payable on this note is $500 spread over a four month period. The interest revenue is 125 and the cash received from the customer is 125. An alternative interest calculation for this would be to take the $30,000 times 5% and then divide it by 365 days and then multiply by 30 days in June. And that would give you $123.29. So the amount is negligible. Uh, the, the difference between the two is small. It is not incorrect to do it based on the number of days and you are free to do so. Of course, the difference is immaterial, and is it worth the extra uh, time it takes to calculate uh, per day as opposed to just simply dividing by four months? And the other thing to note as well is that the exact same entry will be recorded for July, August, and September, of course, presuming that we're using the 125. Here are the journal entries for the remaining three months after June 30th. There is a July interest payment. Uh, an August interest payment and a September interest payment. If you wanted to do on a per day basis again, this would be calculated as 30,000 times 5% divided by 365 times 31 days, and that's $127.40, which is what we would see for July and for August. The other thing to note here as well is that Notice that the date here is not September 30th, this is September 28th, and that's because based on the number of days, this is a 120 day note. So if you split that up into June, July, August, and September, June has 30 days, July has 31, August has 31, and therefore the September must have 28 days to equal 120 days. Uh, but at any rate, that's why that this is recorded on September 28th and for the final interest revenue and cash of 125 or whatever the alternative would be then based on 28 days. And then also on September 28th, we have the settlement entry. The balance in the note receivable hasn't changed. You see here, we recorded the note at 30,000, had a debit of 30,000, that never changed. And so we must credit that note for 30,000 to eliminate it. The company will receive cash from the purchaser and the note will be exhausted and that's it. Now we will change gears just ever so slightly. We move to requirement 1B and here the interest is paid at settlement and the year end is August 31st. So for the first journal entry here, there is no change. 
still on June 1st. The cash received is $1,000 down, the land sales $31,000, and the note of $30,000, along with the cost of goods and the lot inventory. But now, there's an intervening year end based on our example, so the interest is paid at settlement. So there, this means that there are no regular monthly interest payments. It's all paid at the end, but we do have to accrue at August 31st some interest. If we go back to our principal amount, 30,000 times 5% divided by 12 months, that's still 125 a month. But now for June plus July plus August, that's three months. That's why there's an interest accrual here. So interest receivable and interest revenue for 375. Then on the settlement date of September 28th, the cash, the value of the note receivable, 30,000 plus any interest. The note receivable receives a credit to wipe it out. There's an interest receivable from this previous entry over here that has to be wiped out. And an additional one month calculation here for 30,000 times 5% divided by 12 months is 125 times one month is 125. So the total cash received is 30,000 in principle plus 375 that was accrued at the end of August plus 125 for September. Now this slide here just wants to show how the interest is distributed between the fiscal years ending 2020 and 2021. Here, this three months of interest of 125 per month for a total of 375 is in 2020. And then the last month in the fiscal year ended August 31st, 2021. And this is just pointing out that the total interest revenue over the two fiscal years is $500. It's just broken up. Now on to requirement two. In this case, we will assume that the note receivable is non-interest bearing for a two-year period. And now we have to get uh, add a little bit new information here. We have to assume an implicit rate of 6%. Because we have a, a note that is beyond one period, beyond one year, we now have to calculate present value. And to calculate present value, we need a market rate or an implicit rate of interest. Our requirement here is to prepare the necessary journal entries, again, for the sale, the interest payments, and the settlement. And it's also important to note here is that since the interest rate, the note interest rate, or the face rate, the note is zero, that's less than the market rate or the implicit rate. So that note is offered at a discount. And, and we'll see this occur over and over again in your intermediate accounting courses when you have notes or bonds that are sold or issued at premiums or discounts. The journal entry to record our non-interest bearing note starts with the cash down payment. And then what we do is compared to the previous example where the note receivable was recorded at 30,000, that's no longer the case. Because we have a long-term note, this note is a two-year note, we must calculate present value. And the present value of anything is the present value of its total future cash flow streams. There are two future cash flow streams. One is the principal due at the maturity of the note, so in two years. We refer to that as a future value. Then there is a second cash flow, which is the payment. But in this case, because there are no interest payments, then the payment amount is zero. So in the calculation of the present value for a non-interest bearing note, using a typical financial calculator, it's up to you to determine how to use your calculator properly. We can't provide support with that. But basically, your number of periods, the compounding periods, is going to be 2, so 2n, 6 iy. Uh, most calculators have iy as the variable. 0 for a payment and 30,000 future value. And so if you compute the present value, that ends up being $26,700, and that's the amount that the note is recorded at. Following that, the same logic that was applied in the previous example is that the land sales is the sum of the cash and the note. The land sales now, instead of being 31,000, is 27,700, and the cost of goods and lot uh, inventory uh, part of the journal entry is still the same. Now that we have a note receivable that extends beyond one year, it's a good idea to keep track of it using a T account. So right away, this journal entry includes a debit to the note receivable account of 26,700, and we'll see how this T account builds over the two year period. At December 31st, which is a revised year end in this example, okay, because the requirement's changing, we also have to accrue interest at the end of the year. 
How we do that is taking the balance in the note receivable account. So we have a note with a balance of 26,700. Now what we do then is we multiply that by 6%. And that'll give us an annual amount of interest. Remember that the interest rates that are provided are always annual. So it's up to you to make sure that you're aware of that. Then this would result in $1,602 in annual interest. But multiplying that by 7 over 12 months, we have to prorate it since the note was taken out. And this is June to December inclusive. That is seven complete months, and the result is $934 in accrued interest. It's actually more like $934.50, but that's a rounding difference, and we don't need to be concerned about that. So if we start to flesh out our T account a little bit more, what we have here is the journal entry to record this is a note receivable, $934, and interest revenue of $934. Because there's no cash portion here, all of this amount of interest revenue, this interest accrual, ends up being applied against the, the discount. There's a discount between the value of the note, $30,000 minus $26,700. There's a $3,300 discount. And over time, that discount has to be fully amortized against the note receivable account so that at the end of the two-year period, the balance in that note is $30,000. You can see here that we begin with a value of 26700 and then there is a discount amortization of 934 and that results in an ending balance of 27634 at any point to the calculation of amortization on a discount it's the calculated interest rate minus the cash interest so in our calculation here we have 934 dollars calculated interest rate minus zero because there is no cash this is a non-interest bearing note then at the end of the next fiscal year end we go through this exercise again but now we have a new balance here at the end of 2020 that balance is 27,634, which is why we have this 27,634 times 6% interest and prorating over a full 12 of 12 months. So the amount of interest to record as revenue is 1,658, and the amount that goes against the note receivable is a debit to the note receivable because we have to keep building this balance up to 30,000. So here's the additional discount. When that discount is added to the account, now we end up with an ending balance of 29,292. And again, the amortization of the discount here is the calculated interest minus the cash interest. Again, there is no cash interest, just the calculated amount. And then on May 31st, 2022, just before settlement, we have to bring the balance in the account up to where it should be and record that last interest accrual. So with a balance of 29,292 times 6% times 5 over 12 months. So this is the other 5 of 12. Remember in 2020, this was 7 out of 12 months accrued interest. So here's the other 5 of 12 months and that works out to $732. As you can see, adding that $732 back into the notes receivable account gives us an ending balance of $30,024. This is a rounding difference, but this it just goes to show you that the amount the, the work we've done is correct. We end up with a balance in the note receivable of $30,000, which has to be settled, and that will be received from the purchaser. And then we have the final entry to record the settlement of the note. We have cash that is received from the customer of $30,000. We have a balance in the note receivable account of 3024, which we have to get rid of. And we can take that rounding difference. And because the difference is in rounding in all of these interest calculations, we can just go and put that back against the interest revenue just to reduce it. And, and then we've taken care of it and that's all good. The last interesting thing to note here is related to, well, what's the actual revenue generated on this thing? In the first example we had, the total land sales were the sum of the cash plus the note receivable, which was 31000 if you recall. But here, the uh, revenue generated is only 27700 but we have an additional $3,300 in interest. And this interest is implicit interest. It's not actual interest, implicit interest. So the total revenue ends up being... 
$30,000, except that that amount is split between the land sales and the implicit interest. And this implicit interest is simply due to the fact that nothing is free. So if you give somebody a zero interest bearing note, the presumption is that you may still have to finance your business and operating capital, and there is an opportunity cost in offering someone a zero interest bearing note. So what happens is that implicit rate or that opportunity cost is factored into the calculation of the present value of the note and therefore the difference between that present value and the value of the note at the end is interest. Finally on to our third requirement and now we'll assume that the sale is on January 1st 2021. It's a two-year note that matures in 2022 but this time it is interest bearing at 8% and the effective market rate is still 6%. So we will continue to discount at 6% but this time there is interest on the note and Luther's year end is December 31st as before and our requirement is to prepare the journal entries related again to the sale, the interest payments and the settlement. And the other item to mention here as well is that since we have an interest rate of 8% on the note and a market rate of 6%, this note is now offered at a premium. Here we go. As with the other situations, there's still a cash down payment of $1,000 from the purchaser. So there's a debit to cash. But now the amount that's recorded in the note receivable is still the present value. But that present value changes because this note bears interest at 8%. So we have to use our calculator again. So we would put 2N, 6IY, not 8%, not 8%, okay? This is the, the 6% is the discount rate. And that's the amount that we use to calculate present value. The 8% is the rate of actual cash interest that's paid. And that's a different number. It's that 8% that we use to determine in this part right here what the payment is. Remember that the present value is the sum of all future cash flows. In this case, there's a future cash flow that's due at one point in the future at settlement. So this is payment number one, if you will. And there's a series of interest payments that happens. And so this interest payment is a regular stream of cash flows. It's an annuity and it gets entered in your calculator at $2,400. And that is 30,000 times 8%, $2,400 in annual interest. This is received every year over the period of the note. That is entered as the payment, 30,000 future value. If you compute your present value, that gives you 31,100. So what's happened here is that the note receivable now has a different balance than under the previous example. That's 31,100. The land sales is the sum of the cash plus the note receivable. So our land sales are a little bigger this time and the cost of goods and the lot uh, inventory uh, values are still the same. Now what's going to have to happen is if you have been paying attention and are familiar with notes receivable and bonds perhaps, at the end of the settlement date, this note needs to have a value of $30,000 which means there are going to have to be some amounts on the credit side here to reduce the value of this, which has a debit balance of 31,100. We have to amortize that difference of $1,100. So this $1,100 is the premium on the note, which has to be amortized down to zero. At our first year end, we record cash payment from the customer based on $30,000 at 8% is 2,400. Then what we do is we calculate the interest revenue differently. The interest revenue is always calculated as the balance of the note receivable account times the implicit rate of interest. So times our 6%. In this little box right here is exactly what's going on. There's 31,100 is the balance times 6% times 12 over 12 is 1,866. It's 12 over 12 because the sale was on January 1st and we're going to credit the interest revenue. And then in order for journal entry to balance, remember debits must equal credits, 2,400 must equal 2,400. The difference to make that journal entry balance is going to be a credit to the notes receivable account. And that's what's going on over here. 
in the previous example, when we had a zero interest bearing note, that resulted in the note being issued at a discount. And then the amortization of that discount ended up being a series of debits. But in this case, because the note is issued in essence at a premium, then the, the difference, the premium of $1,100 has to be credited. And so that's why you can see just based on the journal entry. So if you're not sure exactly, is it going to increase or debit or credit? Well, always start with the cash portion. Calculate your interest revenue as the balance in the note times the discount rate. And then the, the $534 will just fall out of that. And again, the amortization of a premium is the opposite of the amortization of a discount. In our case here, it's the cash interest minus the calculated interest at the effective rate or the discount rate. The cash interest is at the face rate of the note. Then we'll do the same thing at the end of uh, December 31st, 2022. The cash interest is still 2400. Now the interest revenue is going to change because the note started with 31,100 and that there was uh, some amortization of it resulting in a revised ending balance of 3556. That becomes the new balance on which you calculate interest at 6%. And again, for the full year, 1,834 is the interest revenue and the leftover is the remaining premium amortization. And then when we calculate the balance in our notes receivable, we see here that starting with 31,100, 534 premium amortization in 2021, 566 in 2022 gives us an ending balance of 30,000, which now we settle. Here's the uh, debit to cash for the amount received from the purchaser and the $30,000 credit to wipe out the notes receivable account. And we're finished. So now we'll just go over some key points to remember. First, any note receivable longer than one year must be recorded at its present value. So never forget that. And that's based on the interest rate of the note if it's interest bearing. So we had situations where we had a non-interest bearing and interest bearing note and the receiving implicit rate of interest. Again, if non-interest bearing, always calculate the present value using the implicit rate. And if there is, if it's an interest bearing note, then this basically contributes to a payment in the present value calculation. If it's non-interest bearing, the payment is going to be zero. Interest must be accrued at every intervening year end. And long-term notes receivable are often are discounted at the market rate or the implicit rate, and that's the rate that's applicable to the company. So in any problem, you would be told what the implicit interest rate is or the market rate or the discount rate is. You don't have to calculate it. But the point is, is that it's typically unique to each company. A company that has a good credit rating would have a lower implicit rate of interest, uh, or in the company that uh, does not uh, have a good credit rating might be subject to higher rate of interest. Next, notes where the stated or face rate of interest is less than the market rate of interest or the implicit rate of interest, those notes are offered at a discount. And it's this market or implicit rate of interest, again, that is the discount rate that we use to determine the present value of the note. Notes where the stated or face rate of interest are greater than the discount rate or the market rate are offered at a premium. Premiums or discounts are amortized and that amortization is calculated as the difference between the cash interest paid and the calculated interest at the effective rate. So remember that the implicit rate helps determine what the calculated interest is and the face or stated rate helps determine what the cash interest is. And finally, zero interest bearing notes are effectively offered at a discount. And that effective interest rate calculation is also the discount amortization because no cash interest is paid. This concludes uh, tutorial 14 on accounting for notes receivable. We hope you found it useful.